Hello friends. Like all of you, I too am an engineer. And this is what engineering does to you. You tend to carry cheats everywhere you go. <laughs> now, I would like to start uh, my talk with a very interesting story that I had once heard. So one day, uh, King Akbar asked Birbal to sum up all the wisdom in this world in one line. After several moments of contemplation, Birbal finally came up with a very compelling answer. And the answer was this one simple line which said that there is no free meal in this world. Birbal couldn't have been more accurate. But a few years back when I was a student like you, I used to order pizza from Domino's and I used to pray to God for heavy rains. <laughs> and there were times when our collision really worked and Domino's didn't deliver within 30 minutes and I got my meal for free. And even today, we can get paid in our mobile wallets only by downloading apps for ordering radio cab, grocery, rest of food, right? Now the point that I'm trying to make here is, had Akbar lived today, irony would have died a slow death and so would have Birbal. <laughs> now the point that I'm again coming to is, did we 20, 25 years back imagine this kind of a future? When I was a child, like every other kid, I used to go to school. Actually, I never went to school, I was always sent there. <laughs> and whatever I am today is the result of the time that I spent in my school. So every morning, in the morning assembly, they used to roast us children in the morning assembly, you know? So till we were golden brown in color, as you can clearly see. <laughs> and the one that got more roasted, you know? <laughs> And later on, we were taught lessons in math, science, languages, and other subjects. And if that was not sufficient, weaker students like me had to go to tuition classes after the school. So my tuition class teacher was a 35-year-old uh, housewife uh, who had done her post-graduation in science and who used to teach students in her free time. And like everybody else, she had given up all hopes in me. <laughs> One fine day, she asked me, what I wanted to do in my life. And I said, I have no clue. <laughs> she said, at your age, I was so, so full of ambitions, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Then I asked her what went wrong. <laughs> so last time she had stopped taking tuition classes. <laughs> Now, from my analysis of the situation, I personally feel that there are two very interesting takeaways from our educational system. There are things that are taught and there are things that we learn. We are taught math, science, humanities and other subjects in our school. And in the process of education, we, lead, we learn the virtues of sensitivity, tolerance, responsibility and compassion. And I personally believe that if things that are taught are not in sync with things that we learn, then our entire anticipation of the future goes disgustingly wrong. Post-liberalization in our nation, several sectors like industrial development, infrastructure, power, telecom and other areas have witnessed immense growth. And in this flow of growth, our farmers deviated from traditional farming, farming to industrial farming. Industrial farming is basically use of modern technology and a lot of chemicals to maximize the output. Industrial farming literally yields industrial products full of sulfur, arsenic, phosphorus and other radioactive compounds. Now these chemicals are getting into our body through the food that we eat and they are persistent in the supply chain for a very long time. Now these chemicals are killing insects, birds, humans all alike. Now it is a no-brainer that this so-called growth post-liberalization has come at a cost of air pollution, water pollution, sound pollution. Our national capital Delhi is one of the most polluted cities in the world. Sometime back, Iran declared a two-day national holiday when they surpassed certain levels of pollution. <laughs> I read an article on the internet which said that if Iran had the pollution levels similar to Delhi, there would be a holiday for 27 days a month. Now that they, they do this in India, I'm shifting to Delhi. 
and owing to such large uh, pollution levels, you know, we are heading towards a catastrophe. A report by United Nations Environment Program says that the earth is in the midst of a mass extinction of species. Scientists estimate that nearly 150 to 200 species of plants, insects, birds and animals go extinct every 24 hours. And one of the species that is on the verge of extinction is honey. Now honeybees, apart from being a source of honey and wax, act as critical crop pollinators. So the bees move from one flower to another to gather nectar and pollens. And while doing so, they carry pollens from one flower to another, thereby promoting cross-pollination. Now every year, bees contribute to billions of dollars of agricultural produce annually owing to pollination. An estimated 70% of the crops that feed 90% of humanity are pollinated by bees. So if bees happen to vanish from the surface of the earth, all the crops that they pollinate would die, all the animals that feed on those crops would die, all the other animals that feed on those animals would die. So the entire ecosystem would collapse. Needless to say that if bees are going down, they are taking us along with them. And unfortunately, bees are going down. Now is the time for us to start saving bees. And if living does not seem a reason good enough to save bees, we can move towards the other benefits of bees. Bees give us honey and wax. Now men in this room can argue that we don't really need honey and wax. Right sir. But your honeys need honey for glowing skin and wax for softer lips. <laughs> There is still any man in this room who doesn't care about his wife, which is highly unlikely though. <laughs> I'm sure he definitely cares about his wine because bees pollinate grapes as well. Right. And apart from honey, wax or even wine for that matter, bees have yet another very important utility as crop pollinators. So when bees are reared specifically for pollination and not, not for honey, then the productivity of cross-pollinated crops increases by 20% to 200% depending upon what crop is there under consideration. Now unfortunately, several farmers in India are unaware of this fact and they conveniently tend to avoid bee pollination. However, for those few farmers who have actually used bee pollination, the results speak for themselves. So we have farmers who have grown 300% more lemons, 200% more bitter gourds, 100% more brinjals, 50% more soybean. These, these farmers have witnessed more than 100% increase in their income due to cross-pollinated vegetables only because of bee pollination and that too in the suicide prone region of Vidarbha. Uh, this is one of our farmers and this is his farm that shows brinjals. These are 100% natural capsicum and these are cowpea beans. Now these cowpea beans were so big that they couldn't fit the size of the grape. And the story does not just end here. When a farmer is using bees for pollination, he is not allowed to spray any chemicals in his farm. Because if he does that, then the bees would die. There won't be any pollination, there won't be any increase in the yield. So the farmer doesn't really put the chemicals in the farm. So at the end of the day, the output from that particular farm is 100% pure natural organic output. So it is not just the quantity of the product that is increasing, but also the quality of the product that is getting enhanced due to bees. And it is not just the Indian farmer that is gaining, but also the Indian consumer is gaining. And the Indian consumer can gain in a very big way. It has been observed that since decades, uh, the ignorant human race has been killing bees at a very rapid rate. If that is not stopped, Whatever pollination that is happening today, even that won't happen. Productivity of already unproductive agriculture in India would go down. Farm output would reduce, food output would reduce. If this is not stopped, someday we might have a war on food. And we can stop this war only if we adhere to the principles of responsibility, sensitivity and compassion. Responsibility towards mankind sensitivity towards nature and compassion towards our farmers. We can stop this war only if we prioritize things that we learned about things that were taught. 
modern technology owes ecology and apology. And on similar lines, we Indian consumers owe our farmers an apology. In the last two years, fuel prices have gone up so many times and we haven't even noticed it. Inadequate monsoon this year has, uh, has created a huge drought across the country. So tomorrow if we, want to, if we have to pay 10 rupees extra for a kilo of tomato, suddenly we start making a ruckus out of it. We are okay putting money in the coffers of the super rich rather than paying a fair price for the efforts of the poor. The country's hunger has reached ridiculous levels. There is more fruit in a rich man's shampoo than a poor man's plate. Last year around 25 lakh people died out of hunger in India, out of which 15 lakh were children. And the same year, Chennai Express made a business of 422 crore rupees. So something is seriously wrong with the free markets in India again. Undoubtedly, the contemporary state of affairs indicate a state of moral crisis that we live in. And as someone has already said, that the darkest corners in hell are reserved for people who maintain their silence at times of moral crisis. Now is the time for responsible people like us to stand up to our responsibility and integrate the application of modern technology with the virtues of sensitivity, responsibility, compassion and tolerance. Now is the time for people like us to go back to our basics and adhere to the principles of what we learned about what was taught. Now is the time for people like us to adopt the concept of sustainable production and responsible consumption. I would like to conclude by quoting few lines by Dr. Zuis which goes like this. How did it get so late so soon? It's night before it's afternoon. December is here before it's June. How did it get so late so soon? Last year alone, 18,000 farmers committed suicide in India. That makes one farmer suicide every 30 minutes. As I speak, in a dark corner of some remote village of our country, a farmer must be weighing his odds. Of someone taking care of his family, his sons being spared of his misery, his wife and daughter being employed as landless laborers in his own land. He might go over it again and again, but at the back of his mind, he has made his decision. Ladies and gentlemen, our small actions can stop him from climbing up that road. Now is the time for us to go back to our basics and be the change in his life before it gets too late too soon. Thank you.